180. It just got a 180. 180. Oh, <coughs> hello again. Welcome to another video from Felix Stofan. Would you just caught me in the middle of a cup of coffee? Uh, we seem to be uh, either shotgun pistols or fairly high powered springers at the moment, so I thought, why not go with it? If you've seen my previous first thoughts video about the Suda S, which is what we're going to be looking at today, specifically a whole tier of mods for it, ranging from cheap and cheerful to quite expensive, uh, you realize that that video has terrible lighting. So I'm going to do a quick overview of the Suda. It's a pump action, short dial only, a uh, blaster that comes with katana magazines, some darts, so on and so forth. Very nice uh, ergonomic. It's got a nice stock. No spec buffer tube, so you can really put any buffer, any tube you want on there. All the way in. It's got five positions. It does rattle at the bottom one, at the back end, but unless you're like seven foot tall, you're not going to be using that. Pretty sturdy. Good construction, nice plastic, and it was the first blaster to uh, use takedown pins. Comfortable, nice trigger, compatible with uh, Katana and Talon magazines, uh, adapters, magazine adapters, obviously you can't use the same adapters with the different magazines, they don't fit, and it's pretty good, it's supposed to get about 150 out of the box, I've seen people get very mileage with these. And that's the first thing we're going to look at. Bought your cedar, you want to get a little more reliability, and round right about that 150 you promised. The cedar was the first of the takedown blasters. Pull two pins, take out two screws, and you're good to go. You really are. So let us take the pump grip off. A lot of people don't like the pump grip on higher spring loads. We shall see. That's the back half of your blaster. First thing we really should do is check to see if it's lubed. Apparently, uh, some shipping uh, regulations in the country of origin mean that you can't really ship it properly lubed. So that's what we're going to do first. We just pop open this. And the plunger comes out. There we go. Pop the side, plunger comes out. Let's see if it's lubed. No, that's pretty much dry. There's a tiny little bit of lube in there, but not nearly enough. So the first thing we are going to do is take our trusty silicon grease and lube the plunger. There we go. Smear it on. Lube your tube. Now lube the front as well. Just to put a bit of grease around there. And we're going to lube the back of the bolt because that will improve our air seal. This is one of the nice things about the CD. You can get to all the internals without having to do any mucking about. That's better. That's much better. So we'll put that to one side. Actually, we're going to put it back in because the first this is the first thing we're going to do. We are just going Loop the plunger, push, spread, and these should just click back in place. Make sure you've got the uh, plunger tube facing upright. Take that out. 
it's on the right rails. Oh, that's no, too high. It goes in there. Clicks back in. There's a couple of rails on that. I shall show you. You see those two rails? Protrusions on the side have to go in there, and that just clops back in. This fits in the rails there, and we're good to go. Okay, that's the first of our basic maintenance on the cedar. The next step, we are going to push the barrel out by lowering this white catch there, that one there. And push that down and push backwards on the barrel and it pops out. Super easy. Looks like I've got caught on something. There we go. And this is our cedar barrel. <sighs> and it just unscrews. It's aluminium and it isn't really very long. This is I may have to calculate how long these barrels should actually be. This is about a six inch barrel. We'll measure it. Yeah, near as damn it six inches. And you'll notice these are bare threads. We are gonna see if we can't improve the FPS a little by putting just a little bit of Teflon tape around there. Teflon tape, barrel, Try and get that nice. There we go. Make sure there's none on the inside of the barrel. And then we're just going to screw it in. And that should give us a much, much better air seal. After all, plumbers use it and they can't afford leaks, can they? And we should probably do the other end as well, up near the scar barrel. <laughs> There we go. <clears throat> that is our initial first steps, I would say. I don't know if it's a mod. Does that count as modding? We don't know. When you insert the barrel, make sure this black catch piece is pointing downwards. And you just push it in. There we go. All ready to go. So now we make sure that we are on the right guide rods. There are two rails. That's where we want this to be. There, there, there and there. I think. Oh yeah. There we are. And the whole thing just clicks into place. And then you replace your two pins. As a short one goes up the top. The long one goes at the bottom where it's wider. Now some people don't like these rings and you could in fact take them off if you felt that way inclined but then it'd be a danger of the pins getting pushed through. Okay so what we need now is a chronograph. No those are darts. We can try this with some workers as well. There's the crony. <coughs> And of course it would help if I uh, put the pump grip back on them too. Well, I never claimed to be organised. On you go. There we go. There's the chronograph. Grip slides on again, nice and simple. Make sure you line it up. the hole. <laughs> there 
There we go. That one's in. And once you've got one in, you can't miss with the other one. So we're going to screw that in. And then we are going to see what we're getting with our brand new darts. Going through our chronograph. Slightly bit of seal on the barrel and a properly lube tube. Really important to always lube up your tubes. Have we increased the performance of this at all? That climate came in at 121. Mm. That was 145. That was a mystery. There was no way that was 112. We're getting this straight through. We're we going in straight. 131, 125, yeah. 143, better, 147, wasn't getting it straight, that was 123, 142, 138, much better performance, and that was a dry fire, okay, barrel was a bit too short, however, one thing we can try, at very little cost, and this is the next step, is... Add a little bit of spring. See if a little bit of extra spring makes a difference. Remember, this is you don't want to spend any money. You've got a retaliator line about. You might as well use it. Mm. Okay. Now, funny enough, one of the things you can apparently do with this is put retaliator springs in it. Now, it's rated for, apparently all this stuff is rated for like, I don't know, 14k. It's a 10k spring. This is a 2k spring. We're going to see if upping the spring a little makes any difference. Make sure that's in the rail. Pop that in, make sure that's in the rail. Is it? Yep. Make sure this is on the guide rails. Pins. I love the fact that you can take this thing down so easily. And we are going to be able to do a lot of mods with this. Because the next step is going to be putting a bit of brass instead of that abysmally short barrel. That should be fun. Okay. 
all of that stuff here. We got the best darts in the world anyway. One came bouncing all the way back over here. There's another two down here. That will do. That will do for our test. So we got a high of 147. That's near as damn it 150. We'll give it what it says on the box. Atmospheric conditions allowing for variations and things. So, prime in. Let's see what we're getting now with an extra 2K spring. 156. Pretty, pretty good. And that's no noticeable. It's 134. No noticeable extra stress on the prime. 164. There you go, extra 2K spring. Nothing else. And you can get one of those by going down to your local thrift store or picking up a retaliator or something on eBay. So we've added about 20 FPS just by putting a 2K spring in. 164. Much better. And you can take it down very simply by 155. You can, of course, just go to somewhere like Monkey Mods or AK Blaster Mods or somewhere that sells Cedar Springs and get a 12K spring, and that will probably get you a bit better. This is better. 158. We're going to call this 160, aren't we? And that was 160 exactly. So there we go. Ah, uh, that's the first tier mods. Loop your tube properly. Put some Teflon tape around the, the barrel threads. And drop a 2k retail spring in, or do a 12k replacement spring. I'm much happier with that. So from quite a lot of rather disappointing 130s, we're now getting quite a lot of rather nice 160s. And that was 160 as well. It's much more consistent, it's no harder to prime, and it's hitting very good. Let's try it. With some workers. Let's try it with some Gen 3s. Let's uh, see if we can find some that haven't been fired a dozen times. That cost us nothing. We've added an average of 20 FPS to what it was getting out of the box. And it cost us a bit of tape and a scratch spring. You could put a 5k spring. But then you're in danger of busting your plunder. Uh, not your plunger, your bolt sled. Let's try with worker gen 3s. 161. One. 155. Five. 154. Blew the head off as well. 160, 152, 160, brilliant, more than happy with that, super simple, super cheap, makes the cedar into what it should be, because let's face it, yeah, a hit in 140s, okay, it's got the scar barrel on top, which does lower you, uh, your performance. A little bit. It would probably do 150 without the scar. Is it worth taking that out? What do you think? Is it worth taking that out? Mm. What do we think, children? No, let's keep the accuracy. An extra 10 FPS is only 5 to 10 feet extra range. So that's great. Brilliant. I'm happy with that. Didn't cost us anything. It took us 10 minutes and 11 minutes of me waffling. And we've now got a seed a little hit, quite happily, 160 on nothing else. Okay, one more thing to try. One more thing to try. Let's take our magazine out. Let's keep prime. 
take the whole thing apart again and we are going to brass the barrel. We're going to replace the barrel with some brass because why shouldn't we? I still think this barrel is too short, especially for the plunger tube, which is you know, not far off the size of a prophecy plunger tube. This will cost you a little bit more. It will cost you about ten up, or however much it costs in your part of the world, for a brass breech. That's not for a brass breech, for a... length of 17 30 seconds brass and by the miracle of stop motion animation here's one I did earlier this is narrower and it's about the same length functionally so we are going to put this in we are going to need a bit of pipe don't go away I need to get a bit of piping off cut from an old raider We're just going to screw that on there. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to help keep the barrel. Now, all I've done here is taken five inches of, about six inches actually, of 17, 30 seconds. And I have put electrician's tape around the bottom and then a layer of BTP so that it would actually see into the threads. And it is fairly tight. So we'll put this in and see what we get. It the right way up, pop it in, little wobble but we won't worry too much about that. There's our plunger. I think I'm going to put some more lube around the head actually. Not plunger, bolt. I'll get the terminology right when I, one day. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Those go in the rails. Vitally important you get these in the rails. Okay, same procedure again. You imagine how much of a pain in your bum this would be if you were actually having to undo screws. There we are. Flywheel that use this system would be really nice. And I have to say, I am not having any problems with this mythical, seriously uncomfortable grip. It's really not giving me any grief at all. The pump grip I'm talking about. You put your finger on the front. Remember, this is basically very, very low cost mods. It's like we don't want anything expensive at this stage of our, our cedar. That's going to come in part two. Now we've got four, five Gen 3s, and we'll do five of these jet dart things. How's that? Is that length of barrel going to give us any increase in performance, or have we just completely bugged up any other seal we had? Let's have a look. Let's see what we get. 167.9. three. Hundred and forty five, hundred and sixty. Yeah, does our barrel come loose a bit? Hundred fifty seven. Now we're on the Gen threes. Hundred sixty two. I swear the head came off that one. Yeah, not really worth it at that length of barrel, is it? 156. 
160 barrels, we're not really up to it. 162 racks made not very much difference, though it was very consistent. What about if we went the whole hog and stuck a foot of barrel in there? What do you think? Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to do that off camera because you don't want to see me completely. Yeah, you know, don't go away. That was not in fact the postman. That was somebody else entirely. Okay, we've got our eight inch brass in. <sighs> we've got our darts. Let's see if that's gonna make any meaningful difference. I don't think, I think 12's gonna be too long. But let's have a look. Ready? Here we go. 166.9. Hundred and sixty eight point nine. Yeah, barrel was too short. Hundred sixty one point seven. And probably blew the head off. Hundred and seventy one. There you go. Last of the Gen threes in this batch. Hundred sixty five point nine. We have broken one seventy. Which is what you get out of an Adventure Force Pro 1 for the cost of an extra spring that was free anyway, and 8 inches of brass and some tape. That is really rather good. At least 35, but 26 more than this is claimed for. In reality, this was hit at mid 146, mid 140s, wasn't it? You know, okay, what else are we gonna get? 177. Happy, super cheap. And here we go. I think we got one more after this 173.5. Yep, last start. We have turned this 173.5. That is the second stage mod. I am looking at three stage mods for this on a 12K combined spring. So we're probably not even really talking 12K because that 2K, 2.5K retailer spring isn't getting fully compressed by any means. And we are happy bunnies. All in all, the cedar cost me £80 from patrolbase.com. I am not putting a link down below. You can type it in yourself if you're interested. I'm sure you know how to type. Uh, 140. Let me see. 80 quid for this. We spent 8 quid on a length of brass. Uh, I don't think 12 inches is going to get us anywhere. I really don't. Not off that spring load. So I'm not going to bother. I'm sorry, I'll have to get another length of brass. So, spring from an old stock, it was a stock spring from a retaliator. I do not want to think about putting uh, a 5k spring in here because the internals are right for 14 and I don't want to break them yet. Uh, yeah. Spare spring from a stock retaliator. And an 8k length, 8 inch length of 17 30 seconds brass. Some PTFE tape, which costs you a quid, a couple of quid, and some electrical tape, which will cost you a couple of quid as well. Total cost to get this from 143, I think the highest it hit was 147, wasn't it? I'll check and put that down uh, as a subtitle. So from one, we'll call it 145 high. Averages were in the 130s, really, and we got quite a lot of 120s. we not sure what this is doing. This other people have been getting quite good numbers. Everything's aligned properly. Gas seal's good. Yeah. Stock barrel is too short, I feel. Uh, it's still a little wobbly. I could probably straighten that out with some more tape, but there we go. Uh, yeah. 
and 8 inches of brass, and the brass cost me 8 quid, so I'll say 10 quid all told, and a stock retaliator spring. So total cost, 9 quid, and it's shooting, whew, I think I was 177, wasn't it? I'd take this to a 200 FPS war, because the prime is really, really, if you give it a little a bit of acceleration to start, very easy. I am more than happy with that. That is fantastic. So that's the, that's the stage two mod. You think, remember the stage one? We just increased the air seal and put a bigger spring in. That got us into the 150s and 160s. The brass gave us another 10 FPS. There you go. From 147, so 146, 170, yeah, 177, 30 FPS increase for about a tenner or whatever that is in your local unit of exchange. And I, for one, think that's quite worth it. 30 FPS extra. I mean, when I'm doing uh, flywheelers, I generally reckon that you're looking at a pounder, an FPS increase, to be honest. Once you get past the just rewiring business. Uh, yeah. So that's stage one. Lube it. Do the seals on the stock barrel properly. Stage two. Put in a two... 2 kilogram, 2.5 kilogram retalioid spring. Stage 3, 8 inch brass, 177, down near 180. Stage 3, For st stage 3 is where it gets expensive because we are going to put in a metal retaliator catch plate from worker. We are going to put in a metal bolt sled, a metal bolt because I, for one, do not trust the plastic bolt sled or the plastic on the bolt itself to stand up to high spring loads. And what was we put in? Oh yes. Full of worker barrel, worker metal barrel adapter. All that is quite expensive. Probably about the cost of the cedar itself, we factor in postage. However, 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 we will also be putting in, we're gonna be trying it with a 12k spring and we're gonna use a 2k spring retaliated spring to get that to 14, see what that does, and then we're going to put a length of worker N25 in, which I believe is about 15, 16 kilograms, we shall see what we get with that, given that this was hitting down near 180 on 12k with 7 inch barrel, I think we should break the 200s, probably worth it, anyway thank you for watching part one of Cedar mods in tiers or stages, or however you want to do it. Which is better. Uh, and uh, I've been feeling stuff, unfortunately. This has been quite a ramblingly long video, but it's quite a lot to talk about. I like this, it is solid, it doesn't flex a whole lot. I mean, some of the screws could be tightened up a bit, but I'm not going to do it yet because that don't do a lot. Those mods will be a bit more fiddly. We did, we tried four things. Yeah, most of this was talking about me talking to you. So that's great. 170, high 170 cedar for a tenner on top. Super happy with that. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe, link, share, all the usual things to make YouTube's algorithm not hide my videos away in some dark, shabby corner. Hmm. It's probably where I belong anyway, to be honest, isn't it? Brilliant. I'm going to have some fun with this now. Thank you very much.